All right, today we're gonna disassemble, inspect, and repack these wheel bearings. Let's get going. So we've already removed the brakes. We get those out of the way, hang them up with a, one of these uh, hangers so it's not supported by the brake hose. Make sure you have it hung up. First thing we need to do is get this bearing cap off. So we wanna use a tool similar to this. You could use a chisel and a hammer, but more than likely you're gonna tear that up. If you wanna try and reuse it, Get a bearing cap removal tool. So it's like a big plier. We're gonna squeeze here, try and get it in that gap. Pull that guy off, just like so. We're gonna set it to the side. Then we need to take our cutter key out of the way. A pair of side cutters work really well. We'll straighten that out. We're gonna put a new one in anyway. If it's really in bad shape, you can't cut it off if need be. So we pull that guy out. Now we have to take the spindle nut off once we have the, the cutter pin and retainer off. So it, adjustable wrench should work fine for loosening it up. You do want to have a couple rags nearby. This is kind of a messy job. So we'll set this nut to the side, give the rotor a little wiggle. And our backup washer and bearing will pop out. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put our nut back on a couple turns. And in order to remove the inner bearing and seal, what we're going to do is we're going to take this rotor, we're going to pull it out and down, and then with one quick movement, ready? We we'll pull it off. That bearing and seal are going to stay put there. So we're going to take this to the bench and get it cleaned up. All right, now that we have our rotor on the bench, we're going to get it cleaned up and drive out our bearing race. So you can use a rag to clean some of this old grease out. Uh, you're going to want to have several rags nearby because you're going to get them awful messy. So if you notice these bearing races that fit in here, they're press fit. So it's an interference fit to this hub assembly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this rotor on the bench and we're gonna drive it out. So it's a little tough to see, but there's a small ledge in here you can catch with the, the punch. So we're gonna drive this out evenly. Back up just a little bit. So we're gonna drive evenly between that ledge to drive that race out. Oh, almost. Looks, looks like we're hitting the workbench, maybe. We had to prop it up on a couple blocks of wood so this thing would come out all the way. There we go. So now that we have the race out, this is out. So there's an, you can drive out the race for this side as well. So we drive both of them out. So all we're doing is we're catching that bearing just like this on the back side of that race with a, a flat punch. Okay. So drive the other one out. <clears throat> And then we're going to take all this stuff with the bearings over to the parts washer to get it cleaned up. All right, we're going to clean up our bearing with the parts washer here. So we want to clean all this old grease out. Once we get our bearings cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead and inspect all the rollers. Make sure they look good shape, okay? Uh, make sure it's all clean. We want nice shiny metal on here. We need to remember we cannot use brake clean over here in the solvent tank. We can't intermix brake clean with this type of solvent.
clean our rotor up. It is a good idea if there's, you know, a big hunk of grease in there. Wipe that grease out beforehand. That'll save you a lot of time and effort. We're, we always need to put our dirty, oily red rags in our rag can. So, we'll get this cleaned up here. Once we've cleaned our bearing off in the parts washer, we need to blow that, that solvent out of there, so we'll blow them dry. Uh, what you want to make sure and do is you want to hold the bearing. You don't ever want to spin a bearing with compressed air. It could explode. So I like to hold it over the garbage can in case some of the little grease boogers fall out, but uh, we're going to blow this thing off to make sure it's completely dry. bit of grease still in there so then it's a good idea we can look it over make sure all those rollers look good it is really good and clean just make sure do not spin it with the compressed air so do that to all your bearings get them cleaned up in the parts washer and then blow dry all those parts we're gonna blow dry our, our other bearing and the backup washer and uh, the, the bearing race all these pieces all right, we got this all cleaned up. We got it blown dry where the bearings right here. So we need to drive our race back in. We're gonna use this race and seal driver. So bearing driver. If you notice, we need to find the cup that fits the race. So that guy fits on there really well. So that's gonna push on this outside edge evenly. So uh, we got a kit here. Choose whichever one fits best in there. And then it just installs on a handle easily like that. So we're gonna put our race in. You wanna make sure and drive it square so we can't be hitting it in crooked. We need to make sure we're hitting it in square, so straight the whole way. So, so it's good to go slow and I can kind of use my finger to check. So we're a little high right here as compared to here. So I'm, I'm gonna put a little more pressure on this side. We're pretty even. Nice and even, so we're gonna try and drive it home. All that it's in all the way when you hear the tone of the, the tool change. Once we have our bearing race driven in, so we need to prepare our bearings to go back into the, the uh, hub assembly. So what we need to do is we need to pack these with grease. There's a couple different methods. We have a automatic bearing packer that we'll show you how to use. And then we also have the old fashioned method uh, of just doing it by hand. So uh, I want you to try both of them. So the automatic bearing packer has a dust cap. Pull that dust cap off. This handle unscrews off here. And then all you got to do is set your bearing end cone side down into that grease like that. And we'll put it in, and all we gotta do is push down on the bench, put a little pressure on there. If you look, that squeeze grease out in between, in between all the rollers there. So comes all the way out. So I usually take that little bit of excess. I'm just gonna smear it on the outside. Little bit of grease so I'm going to smear it on the outside there to make sure those rollers are lubricated so that's how you would use the automatic packing old-fashioned method so we take a dry bearing here and all we need to do is get a little bit of grease in our hand and essentially we're going to work this bearing kind of in a motion like this so if we wipe it across that the palm of our hand 
you can see that it's starting to pack that grease in, okay? So it's a good idea to wear a glove if you don't want to get your hand all nasty. So I'm just working that grease in. I'm gonna wipe off the extra, turn the bearing a little bit, work that grease in. So we got some extra in here, work it in. But by the end, you wanna see where it's squeezed grease all throughout this cage area, okay? So you do all the way around. It's a pretty messy job, but it's not hard at, in, at all. So once we have it packed all the way around, then we're gonna put a light coat around the outside here, just like we did on that other bearing. All right, we're gonna go back to our rotor. So we're gonna drop this in. I usually put just a little bit of grease on there. Make sure it's seated the way it should. Probably wanna clean your hands up. It's real nasty. All right, so we have our inner bearing in the rotor. It's all packed with grease, ready to go. So we're gonna take our seal. We need to drive our seal in. Uh, this instance, we're actually reusing the seal. Sometimes you can. Uh, if this was a customer's car, we'd replace it for sure. But we're gonna reuse it for this, uh, this example here. So we need to drive the seal in. If you notice, it's a little high here, so you can kind of use your fingers again. You need to drive it in evenly. So it should go in pretty easy. You can tell when it's in all the way because the hammer changes tone. So now we have our inner seal in, our inner bearings repacked with grease. We got our outer bearing repacked with grease, so we're ready to go back to the vehicle and install. All right, we're back at the car. We're ready to put our rotor and bearings back on, so we're gonna clean up this uh, spindle assembly. You can usually just use a rag. Uh, sometimes you might have to put a little brake cleaner on the rag and get this guy cleaned up. So you wanna inspect, make sure that the spindle is in good shape to where those bearings ride, and also back here where that seal rides. So it's not uncommon to have a seal that'll wear a groove into that spindle assembly, and uh, that grease seal will never seal again. So that grease seal's there to keep water and dirt and mud and all that kind of debris out of the bearing area because uh, these bearings just need that grease to operate. So we got that guy cleaned up. Check your threads, make sure they're good. You can always get the nut, make sure it screws on easily. So looks good. So we're gonna put our rotor back on. So when I go to put it back on, I wanna make sure and put it on square so that the bearing slides on the shaft correctly and that seal doesn't get messed up going over that lip there. So we're gonna hold it up, feed it on. I wanna try and center this up because that's giving me an idea that I'm going on straight. So get that on. I'm gonna put my outer bearing, it's nice and greased. Install it. We got our backup washer, then our nut. All right. So I usually use an adjustable wrench and I'm gonna run it down snug. And I'm gonna make sure to be turning the rotor while doing that. So I'll snug it up. Turn the rotor both directions usually. So what this does is it makes sure that the, the bearings are seated correctly. So per Ford, in the service information, we're gonna torque this nut to 30 foot pounds. So we torque that to 30 foot pounds. Then we're gonna turn this guy. And what's that, what that is doing is it's making sure the bearings are seated. So we're going to spin both directions. Then Ford says that we back it off 180 degrees. And then we're going to torque it again. But this time we only torque it to 20 foot pounds. So we're going to adjust that torque wrench down to 20. Be careful here, it's really easy to over torque these. So we got it torqued at 20. Everything feels good. 
I might loosen it up and retorque it again. Make sure we're at 20. Everything feels great. Then we need to retain our nut with our cutter key. So it has this cage, this cutter key retainer. Put it on here and you have to turn it to where the slots line up the best. So it might take a couple tries. Now that we have that, you need to use a new cutter pin. So run your cutter pin through. You can get your side cutters. One tail's a little longer than the other. I'm gonna tighten it up, bend that guy over. Bend the other one over. Now we're good to go with that. So we got our bearing installed. It sounds good, nice and smooth. We need to put our dust cap on. <clears throat> like I said, when we removed it, these are very easy to tear up and uh, damage. If it's all dented in, you do want to get a new one to replace it. Uh, this one's in pretty good shape, so we're going to try and reuse it today. So same thing as the bearing race. You want to make sure that this guy's installed square. So if you put it in a little unsquare, you can see pretty wobbly there. So we want to try and install it as square as we can. Then we can use a flat punch on that little rim there. Start driving it in. So nice and steady all the way around. That uh, make sure it goes in evenly. And again, you can hear when it goes down all the way because the pitch of the chisel changes, or pitch of the hammer changes, so. There you go, you have one repacked and serviced bearing. Uh, you do wanna make sure and be very diligent in cleaning up afterwards, so get you a little brake clean on a rag, and we are gonna clean this rotor up, because remember, any greasy fingerprints or anything like that on the brake pads will contaminate it, so do the outside, do the inside. Might put a waste barrel underneath, spray it off with brake clean one last time, then you can reinstall your caliper and brake pads. So that's how you would service a conventional style serviceable wheel bearing.